Good morning, everybody. I'm doing this live over in my live class group for Dandelion Wishes. So, once I finish it, it will be posted to the uh, YouTube channel that I have, which is Lindsay Ostrom. What is my YouTube channel? I think it's Lindsay Ostrom. Um, as promised, I told you guys I would do a second video doing the um, five-step method. So the first one is pencil it in. And this is for the little cards that you got. The second uh, step is to pen it in. Pen and erase your pencil. That's kind of together. The third step is to watercolor. The background. The fourth step is to colored pencil the detail. And then the fifth step is the white and any uh, bling, glitter, whatever I choose to put in there. So, hey Dion, I know it's early, but I'm awake and I decided what the heck, I'm going to do this. So those are the steps for me, the way I color my stuff. Let me get my watercolors open here. I like to use three different watercolor palettes. I have a very inexpensive watercolor palette by a company called Uli, which is available through Adorn It. I have an expensive um, artist quality watercolor set that is by um, Angora, which is a little bit more transparent of a real watercolor set. And then I have one that's by, um, oh, why can't I remember? This is Sakura Koi. And then I have a rag that I wipe off my watercolor as I go. These are water brush pens that hold water inside the barrel. And as I go, I wipe the color off. So the first thing I do is I take a white piece of cardstock. I don't use watercolor paper or anything. I just use cardstock. So there's the second step, because I'm only going to do the coloring in. So the first thing, first step, which is step number one here, I pencil it in. And it's just very loose. It's not really exactly how I'm going to do it. It doesn't have all the detail. And like you can see here, I lengthen this a little bit. So then once it's penned in, I go back and erase all the color, uh, the regular pencil. Then I grab a water brush and I just watercolor it in, in whatever colors I like. And it's spring, so I tend to use springy kinds of colors right now. And I usually overshoot it. My water brushes are doing weird things right now. They're not retaining very much color. Let's try this one. I don't know what's wrong with them. I really don't, but it's like the water's not coming out as much as it should. Ah, there we go. Now it's coming out. Now I'm getting lots of color. So this will be saved here as well as on YouTube. And I think I'm also going to post it in our other creative lettering group. Probably not, actually. We'll just stick it on YouTube. So I don't really wait for it to dry a whole lot. And I don't give it lots of thought. I just like to get it done. I try to do it quickly. Especially when I had however many we had in our class yesterday. There were like 30-something. So it takes usually to do that many. It takes me all day because it's kind of a big process. But for one, you know, and I like to overshoot um, and do it on the outside. I think I said that. But I love to just get color going everywhere. It doesn't have to be the exact same colors on the inside, but for this one, I did that. And I like it darker. I'm going to go back and brighten up some of this green. But that's what the colored pencils are for. It kind of brightens up everything once you're done. Dion, this is like a class for one. It's you and me, baby. Mm, not real happy 
about how that just turned out, but that's okay. You can fix everything in the detail work. And why do I use so many different watercolor sets? Because they each have different colors of the same color. Like this is a much deeper orange in one of the sets. So I love certain colors about certain sets. The same way I buy so many pens. So. I kind of went backwards with my rainbow today. But that's all right. And this is the cheap set. And it is usually more opaque. But this one, for some reason, is being very transparent. Not sure why, but I'm just going to leave it, not worry about it. And I go darker on this outside stripe, and then I'll come back and kind of overshoot the whole thing, wipe off a little bit of color and overshoot it so that it just kind of spreads out, kind of over or outlines the whole thing. I didn't do that with my orange yet. My voice is all gravelly because this is the first time I've talked. I've been up since 2.30 this morning. And I'm tired of laying in bed, so I got myself up to do this. And I don't want to wake my husband, so I'm talking quietly. Because he goes to work every day, and he's tired on the weekends. I don't blame him. So yeah, this is gonna be a reverse rainbow, starting with yellow. I don't know why I started with yellow, but I did. It's okay. Nobody's judging me, just me. Ah, Sunday morning and my dog's already barking. It's great, there must be animals out there happens when you live in the middle of a forest. Okay, and it doesn't have to be perfect because the perfect, to me, the imperfect is the perfect part. I don't know how to explain that, but I like it imperfect. I like it kind of messy. I love going outside the lines. It's just a thing I like to do. And we're gonna do a darker green. We'll pick up that olive green here and do this part. It's my favorite color is that olive green. I guess we're gonna end with yellow. So we started with yellow and we'll end with yellow. I use a different color yellow more of a lemony. So I don't know if you can see, I'm just kind of going quick. It's not, it doesn't take me a lot of time except for like on that one that had the greenery, had to take a little bit of extra time. Okay, and then when I got to this flower, I just kind of did this. I just like the color. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I used a brick here, Dion, we used to live in Wyoming and had moose in our backyard. Ha, huh, that's very cool. We had a deer here last night um, bucking its antlers against our wall of our house. And we've had that before. And they, um, <clears throat> I found a full set of antlers one time. It was really cool. Although I did think somebody was trying to break in. Well, I realized it was a deer. I gotta get rid of these comments. How did I do that yesterday? There we go. <clears throat> All right. The bigger problem is, where's my colored pencils? 
I think they're in the other room. I'm gonna have to go find those. I cleaned up yesterday after our class and put stuff away and then now of course I need it. Didn't think that through too well. All right, I'm gonna be right back. Okay, so in this step, I love the yellow too. Yellow makes me so happy. Anyway, in this step, I usually walk away from it for a while and let it dry. Or if I had a um, heat tool, I could dry it. I don't have that, so I'm gonna use my washcloth to kind of dab it a little bit so that when I get to this part of it, it's more dry. That's not dry either. Great. My colored pencils are not gonna like this. It's just gonna be just too wet. But we'll try it. I see, I can see the sheen of where it's wet. I'll dab off all of that. Be much better if I could find my heat tool, but it is lost somewhere in this house, probably in my craft room somewhere, who knows. Anyhow, okay, so I'm going to work sideways here. So now what I like to do is I take a darker tone of that tone, like this is a rust color, and I'm just going to give it some detail, which it's not going to like very much because it's not totally dry, but that's all right. And you can outline it. This isn't really dry, so I can't start there. You can outline it. You can add detail inside of your letters, little, um, little lines. This one doesn't need much detail because it's the detail itself is in the color and it's totally tiny. Find a good orange though. Never know how it's gonna turn out until you're all done. It's my favorite color, pink. And it's, this is not rouge quadricome, chrome. Do it sideways, cause it's all wet over there. This is not gonna be as bright as it normally is. Cause it's wet and the pencil is kind of soaking in. But hey, I should have grabbed a blow dryer. I saw a picture the other day of a kid that had a birthday during the virus thing. And the mom put like 16 candles on his cake. Then she gave him a blow dryer to blow him out so that he didn't blow germs all over the cake. It was very cute. And this gets brightened up a whole lot when you use the white. Oh, I left the white in the other room. I'll go get that in a minute. I wasn't very prepared here, was I? Oh, well. I knew you guys wouldn't be here, except Dion, who's early with me. But you can start seeing how the details, just bringing it all kind of to life. And you can outline it if it, like the green bled into the yellow a little bit here, but 
I don't really care about that. I just want to deepen this up a little bit. I think that yellow is just too wet to do anything with, but we'll see. Oh no. There we go. Great yellow. It's really deep. It's called ochre. And I don't have a pencil sharpener here, so I'm dealing with not very sharp pencils, but that's all right. We don't need to get really precise detail. So you can already see the difference between these three and these three. To me, anyway, I can. I love that. And if you don't have colored pencils or, um, oops, something's under there. If you don't have colored pencils or watercolor, you could always do the same thing with marker. I'm not a big marker girl. I don't like the way they are so deep. When you put it down, you can't get it lighter or darker. You only have what's there to work with. I do like watercolor and colored pencil because it, you can start really light and then you can get darker if you wanted to. Hi, Leah. Good morning. I snuck on here when I figured nobody was here, and now I'm. Um, Dion will tell you I'm extremely unprepared for this, but just wanted to get it done before my husband wakes up because we have to go cut wood again in our yard. So I thought it was a good time. You'll have to go back and watch the beginning to see all the different steps that we just did. There was the pencil step, which is one, penciling it in, then inking it in and erasing the pencil. Then we did the watercolor. Now we're doing colored pencil. I just like the colored pencil because it really brightens up your watercolor. And I love the watercolor because it's a watercolory look. It's so quiet in my house, you can even hear the coloring of the pencil. Dan says, I remember those days of cutting wood. <laughs> uh, our power company, PG&E, is the reason that there was that giant paradise fire last year, which is near where we live. Um, and they got sued for the fact that they didn't take care of their power lines. So long story short, now they're taking care of their power lines to the maximum where we've had 20 trees cut down this summer, or winter, sorry. And they just cut them down and then they leave them there. <laughs> so we have to cut them up and turn them into firewood. And we leave them there sometimes too, but trying to keep it, keep it going. Good morning, Leah. The other thing that's nice about colored pencil is you can do dark into light. So I had that light green dot and then I'm going darker with a dot in the center of it. <laughs> Do a little shadowing here. Sometimes I really got to get a piece of paper under this. It's picking up the grain in my wood table. 
always add some padding under your stuff. That's why I use a clipboard. Although my clipboard is buried under the covers in the bedroom because I was drawing in the middle of the night last night. Uh, I'm lucky that my husband loves me because I am a lunatic sometimes. prompted us to move north. Well, I had a partner in our my other company, which was her company, and then I became a partner, and it was Cut It Up, a scrapbooking company, and she lived up here. And we were doing things for a large company as well as for Walmart and QVC back in the scrapbooking day, and it was much easier for us because we were making money hand over foot. <laughs> I'll just tell you that. Um, it was a really good gig for a long time, and it was much easier for us to live near each other. So I convinced my husband, who had his job for 22 years with a friend, friend's company, convinced him to quit and come work for our company, which was not a good deal because we didn't make it for very long. Six years, maybe longer. I don't know. Anyway, so he quit and came and worked for us, and then our company, you know, when scrapbooking went south, we went south. And she and I um, parted ways, friendship-wise. And so now we live here. And I love it. And we raised our kids here, and I would never have done it any other way. We love it. We're in the middle of God's country. We're surrounded by trees. We're in between Sacramento and Reno. So it's the middle of the Sierra Nevadas. It's just beautiful. And it's quiet and... Love it. Just love it. Yeah. I got to go back in the other room and get my white pens. So see how I overshot the heart here with the pencil? Because I put my pencil down in the wrong place to begin with. But it's okay because it just becomes part of the design. When you make a mistake, just own it. Own that mistake and keep going. Just pretend like you were supposed to do it. And I have been overshooting my leaves for a while now because I love the way these look with the stripes going on the outside of the leaf as well. This is like a private class for you guys. You're just the only ones here. So I hope you try this with your lettering. It's really fun to make these. I do them as postcards like this, and then I write on the back. Um, people love getting them. So, And if you look at your postcard or your name card, it will look, look just like this one. Very similar. I love cross hatching. Gives tons of detail. All right, don't leave me because I'm going to go run and get my white pens so I can come back and do the detail. And then we'll be done with this. Oh no, I got to do a little bit of, um, whatchamacallit, a little bit of glitter. I don't think I did glitter on anybody's. We'll do some on mine. I'm not a big glitter person. And I was rushing to get those in the mail, so. All right, so there that is. I'll be right back.
Okay, so yesterday I found out that you can get these Posca pens, I think, um, from Creative Escape in Los Gatos. She let me know she has them. So if you're looking for them currently, I have some on order from one of the pen companies online, but mine won't be here till the end of May. So I'm going to order a couple from her. I always like to have a spare because I just don't do anything without the white anymore. It's just it just is the perfect accent to me. It accents your color and just makes it brighter. It just makes everything pop. So you can see the difference with the leaf before. So here's the green without it right there. And here's the green with it. And to me, it's just, here, watch. Watch this one. I'll just add some dots right up the middle to kind of separate the two colors. Pump it a little to get a little more white. So see the, my white is not very white there. I gotta shake it. It's almost out of ink. I pray every time I open it. Please make it, please last. There we go. A little more white there. Just shake it and do um, pump it again once or twice. It'll get you a darker, brighter color. So there, there's the white on the leaf. And you'll be able to see it here on the pink real easy. See the pink dots? Different with the white than with just the pink. Love it. And you don't need much more on that L because the leaf is the detail on that one. And this one I'd like to just come into the black and add dots and a line. I think you want to fill those dots in on this blue letter. Fill those in with a darker color. <clears throat> maybe a brighter color, maybe a green. I may not be able to see it at all. Nah. Too tiny. It's okay. Not really. So then we'll add some detail there. Not very bright white on the screen. My pen is really just running out. I'm lucky that it has any ink in it at all. I don't think it's going to show up in that yellow, so we can add some white dots in here. Add some little lines here. and add some dots in our heart. And that's about all we're gonna get on this. Oh, here, forgot that part. That's about it. Dion says, after the class yesterday, I decided I'm doing this for kindergartners to keep us connected. Oh, I wanna see them so much. My daughter's been, my daughter's a special ed teacher and she's been making signs for her, uh, she does special ed, I just said that. And so she's making signs for when the kids come on the computer. It's very cute. And her, I gotta tell you, she is not the biggest artist. She doesn't have time for it. Oh, but when she does it, it's magic. She's just got my talent 10 times over. All right, I don't know if you can see the glitter. Let's see if I can catch the light. Not much, huh? Is it sparkling there? Well, you don't need much glitter. But since I started it, I just go and I add it in all of the letters. Just a little bit of a highlight. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to think too much about it because it just adds the sparkle. Yeah, this I don't think you guys can see. 
but I'll try it again. I'll hold it up. And then I'm out of here and go back to working. And that's all the five-step method. Oh, come on, shine. Sparkle and shine. Well, I don't know if it's sparkling or not. I hope so. Anyway, that's pretty much it, kids. Uh, and I lost my piece of paper that had the five steps on it. Oh, there it is. So, again, we did the plain piece of paper here. We did pencil and erase, which this is the pencil. And then we did the watercolor, this. And then we did colored pencil on top of it to give the detail. I don't sleep. That's true. I don't. And then white and bling for our last fifth step. And I would, I could add glitter glue. Oh, let, maybe I do have glitter glue. I can show you that. Yep, two other things I love so much. Stickles, glitter glue, which I know that Dandelion Wishes has. And I think she has this other stuff too, but we'll use this first. So this just is real chunky and it'll dry clear. That stickles. Now you can see that glitter, right? And it'll dry clear, but it's gonna dry raised. This stuff I love, it's called crystal glaze. They also make crystal lacquer, diamond glaze, glossy accents, all of the same, it's all the same. And when you put it on, it makes your color underneath become raised and three-dimensional. It looks like glass when it dries. And maybe you've seen enamel dots or enamel accents. That's what this stuff is. So I don't buy the accents. I buy this stuff and let it work. It's magic. I didn't want to do it on yours because in the, um, in the envelope, it may have stuck to the envelope. So this is Nouveau, which is Tonic Studios. Nouveau Crystal Glaze. I don't remember how much it was because I pulled the sticker off, but these are about $2.50 stickles. And I only buy the clear so they make crystal, twinkle, unicorn, stardust. This is icicle. And so it's milky right now, but you can see that it's raised. And as it dries, it'll just become a clear, lacquered gloss. And it is super fun to use. So that's the last step, girls. So thanks for joining me. This will be saved over on my YouTube channel forever, so I will post it there as well. Have a great day. Love you guys.